Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT, and we are going to look at some fall color photographs. These are some images I took in Rocky Mountain National Park. And some of these images, they looked so great when I was out there photographing, but I got home and they just, it felt like they missed the mark. So I got home, they look like this. They look a little bit bland and you'll have to bring them to life in Lightroom with a little bit of editing. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make your autumn colors pop in Lightroom. So let's get right into this. I really like this photo, but I think maybe a more appropriate photo would be this here, my Nikon Z6 here in Colorado. This whole album is from Colorado in the Rocky Mountains. So here's the before, here is the after. And if you really enjoy this look, I think I'm going to make this into either a single Lightroom preset or a preset pack and attach the link to this video if you would like to download this preset. And I'll add just a little bit of my secret sauce and some personal touches to get us from this nice before to this nice after. And again, I will have the link to the Lightroom preset down in the description. You can so easily over edit your images. And I wanna show you that we can simply do this to a tasteful degree without absolutely nuking our yellows, our oranges, all those fiery golden colors that we depend on for autumn colors, that nice golden glow. And we can go ahead, we can edit those without taking our image too far and making it kind of look sick and oversaturated. So let's go ahead, let's go to our settings. We will reset all of our settings. And now we are here with the original photo at ground zero. So what I like to do is open up my calibration tab. You can see mine here in the right hand corner is in the upper right. I show you guys how to move these tabs around in my 30 days of Lightroom videos. So just refer to that playlist if you feel that you might be missing an idea, a technique, or how a tool works in Lightroom. Again, 30 days of Lightroom, and I'll have the playlist linked below. So what I wanna start by doing in this calibration tab is to make my reds a little bit orange. And you can see we make them a little bit orange and yellow, and what we're doing is we're just pushing these reds over to the right, and things that are red get a little more orange, things that are orange get a little more yellow. So we're just going to subtly push that. We don't want to overdo it. I think 25 was about the right number last time I did this. And you can see things get a little more yellow and you can see we're playing with those yellowy orange colors. We're going to do the same thing down here with our green primary and push our greens towards the green. Some may be tempted to make your greens yellow, but again, it makes them kind of sickly yellow. So I don't like that. Again, we're gonna do 25 with our green primary, and then we're gonna pull our blues towards the cyan and pull them down to maybe negative 15 or 20. Let's do negative 20 to start with, minus 20, there we go. And now we can see the before and the after. It is very subtle. Our image looks a little more warm. So that is our calibration tab. Next, we're gonna go down to our basic tab, our basic toning sliders. And I like to start with landscape images and using the Adobe landscape profile here. And you can kind of just see the before and after that gives our image a little more saturation. And it, I feel like opens up the dynamic range just a touch. Next, I'm gonna go down to our white balance and I'm going to edit this manually. Again, your intuitive nature may say, let's warm this up and you can easily go, you know, nuclear sepia yellow here, or you can go too far to the blue. Now that looks a little bit too cool, but actually pulling your image towards the cooler temperatures down here in the left, pulling that down actually gives us kind of a nice look. So maybe somewhere around 5,000 Kelvin. And see, we've actually introduced just a little bit of color contrast. Our image was a little bit too warm. And by bringing in the blue and these cooler tones back into our image, we actually get better contrast between the yellows and the blues, kind of that orange and teal look. So we're using kind of basic color theory to make our images look good and using contrasting colors. Now the tint of this image 
looks just fine. I'm not going to mess with that at all. I will mess with the exposure a little bit, bring it up just a tiny bit. Again, our gut may say, bring it way up, but we don't want to blast out our highlights. Remember, a little bit goes a long way. That looks good. Our contrast looks pretty good. Again, our gut instinct as a beginner sometimes is to crank the contrast. Let's go ahead, let's leave our contrast alone, and I will show you some better ways to really get in and manually kind of feather your contrast around and target these key areas of our image instead of just one global edit. So let's go down to our highlights. And again, we're just gonna target the highlights of the image. We will bring those down a touch. Again, subtle. We are here to make subtle edits, maybe minus 1415. That looks about good with the highlights. Same with the shadows. We all love to crank our shadows open. Let's not do that. Let's just go subtle maybe somewhere a third of the way up. Now let's again look at our before and after. See, we are making subtle progress and all of these subtle little adjustments add up to make something that looks really good. Our white values here, they look pretty good. I may bring them up just a hint, like plus 10, and then we'll bring some contrast in our blacks. And let's say, Minus 20 looks pretty good. So again, we will do a before and after hitting backslash on the keyboard. Here's our before and here's our after again, subtlety. So texture is fine. I may add just a hint of clarity. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add just a touch of vibrance. You can see this dehaze here, probably the 50th tool in Lightroom we all love to overdo. All about subtlety. So now we can see our basic edits off and on again off and on and we can look at our raw photo here's the raw and here are edits so far i think i actually took the clarity up a little bit too far i don't love how that looks i may push the clarity to about negative 10 that gives our trees a little bit of glow and i actually like that a little better there's a little more glow up here in our highlights Next, we're gonna go down to our tone curve. And I usually like to get a general consensus of what I want our image to look like in our basic slider. And then I will do some more tweaks with our tone curve. Let's say our image may be lacking a little bit of contrast. I can kind of go in here and just play with my exposure a touch. You see this subtlety, look how much of a difference that's making, especially pay attention to my histogram. Just this little bit of a lift makes a huge difference in our image. And yes, I do see that some of my whites here are clipped a little bit. I can turn those on. I'm okay with that. You can see this little button up here in the upper right. Sometimes we'll forget to turn that off or we'll accidentally turn it on and we'll see these red marks in our image and have no idea what that is. Click here, turn that off. The same thing with our clipping shadows. This little check mark right here or arrow, you can highlight over it, see what detail has theoretically been lost, but I think this looks good. I'm okay with this touch of contrast. I'm okay with our blacks being nice and black. That's how it looked in real life to my eyes. And this was kind of blasted white and a little bit overexposed because there were some hazy clouds with the sun just popping through a tiny bit. So this was very bright. And I think so far, this is a pretty good representation of what I've seen with my eyes when I was in Colorado. And I'll do the same thing with our shadows. Bring those down just a hint. Let's look at the before and after. Those subtle edits make a huge difference. So I think we're looking really good so far. You could stop there, but I like adding just a hint of my own personal flavor to my images. Now I typically skip this little color grading tab. I'm not a huge fan of it used to be split toning, not a huge fan of it. They change it around to be this kind of mid-tone shadow highlights. I really don't play with these. It's very easy to take your shadows and make them too blue or take your highlights and make them too purpley orange. You may like that look and this may be for you, but I prefer instead of targeting my shadows, my highlights and my mid-tones when it comes to color, I prefer to actually target the colors themselves. When I want to play with contrast and the highlights, the mid-tones, the whites and the blacks, I will play with the tone curve and I will play with my basic toning tools. When I want to play with color, 
I love the color mixer. I just feel like I can really get my hands into the colors themselves. And it's just a different way of thinking about your imagery and how to edit your imagery. So I'm going to take my reds, make them very nice and red. You can see some of those are just subtly changing in here. Some of the hues in there. Again, your brain may say, take your oranges and crank them red. That looks like a horror film. We don't want that. We also don't want to go towards that sickly yellow. So sometimes I'll just do a very minor pull towards the left, towards the oranges. And with my yellows, yellows are the root of this image. They are the key to this image. And in a way, our brains are using this yellow hue to kind of base the rest of the image and judge the rest of the image off of. So I'm not going to play with my yellows here at all. I will take my greens and potentially move them away from the yellows, kind of pull them towards the green here. So that takes anything that may be kind of greenish, kind of yellow, and makes it a nice solid green. My cyans, push those a little bit towards the green, the blues towards the cyan. Let's close this down actually. There we go, we can just look at our hue here, our saturation here. Saturation's pretty good. I want to leave it alone for the most part. I may, sometimes I go in and I'll dial down the blue. Sometimes I'll punch it up just a touch, but I typically don't want to mess with the yellow or the oranges. If anything, I may desaturate the oranges just a little bit. We don't want to go too far. We definitely don't want to oversaturate them. So sometimes just to be careful, I'll take the reds and the oranges down just a hint. We don't want to do it too much. We don't want to add a bunch of red hue and potentially have our hues clipping. So we'll go ahead, we'll leave those alone. I may end up, you know, playing with this blue later on, depending on the image itself. For example, this image, we have some blues to edit. We may go in here and decide that yeah, we want a little more blue saturation. Again, we don't want to overdo it. Maybe we decide we want it a little less saturated so we really focus on these oranges but anything i do again with these reds and oranges it's going to be pulling towards the negative because we don't want them oversaturated. and again the yellow double click to reset it we leave our yellow at zero next we're going to go ahead and look at our luminance values for our images let's go back to that z6 image here that we were taking a look at and editing and we could use a little bit of work. Typically I'll go in here, I'll take this targeted selection tool right here, and then I can drag up or down to edit the value. I can do that with saturation and hue as well. I love this little targeted adjustment tool. So for our yellows, I might bring those down just a little bit so they're not clipping. We can get nice saturated colors when they're a touch darker. Same thing here. I may bring up our reds a little bit. I like how those look when there's a touch of vibrance or a touch of lightness to our reds. Greens, we'll go ahead. We might darken up our greens. I typically like to darken the blues, the cyans, and we'll see kind of this little curve here. So as our image gets to the cooler tones, they darken and they're a little more bright and cheery in these warm tones. So once again, let's go ahead and look at the before and the after. And you can see all of these little subtle edits add up to a big edit and a big difference in our images. And let's say we want to go back and maybe play with our white values. Just tweak them a touch. Maybe we want to bring back a touch more of the highlights or even push our highlights a little bit further. I'm okay with that too. That's when we come in and typically just make our global edits like exposure. Now, let's say maybe your colors are still missing the mark just a little bit. I will come in and then maybe bring some green into my shadows, maybe some purple into my shadows. Purple is a nice kind of hidden color in fall colors. And what I mean is purple is a good contrast in the shadows in fall color images because yellow and purple are pretty opposite on the color wheel. If you bring in some blues and some purples, purple is kind of almost a cool color. If you want to bring those purples in, you can get some interesting looks. You can also play with this blue primary, add a little more orangey red fiery warmth. If I do that, I may bring down my saturation a touch. And again, we can look at the before and the after and we're starting to get those fiery golden colors that you're starting to see 
in all of these images again before and after and I have this pretty much set up with this tutorial so all you have to do follow the tutorial make some basic tweaks to your image the way you like them and then you just go in and really play with your exposure and your toning to get it to match your image so all of these images here are edited pretty much identically but the exposure is just adjusted a touch. So you can see all of these very, very closely edited together. And that's really the main lesson I want you guys to understand in this video is subtlety is key. A lot of little subtle edits you see here add up to make the big picture and make sure you're not over editing your image. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out some of my other videos like my 30 days of Lightroom. And until next time, get out and go shoot.